hi there, I thought it would be quite helpful to run through a Q&A session about the regular questions we've been getting about the Earl of Lytton's amendment to the Leveling Up and Regeneration Bill. Um, the debate is due to take place in the House of Lords fairly soon, um, so hopefully I can answer some of those burning questions. The first one is, won't the Plu to Pays amendment cause an increase in litigation and delay remediation? We don't think that it will. Um, we envisage a triage process for the polluter pays determinations process. Any buildings where compliance is ambiguous are likely to be funded by the construction-wide industry levy rather than engaging in complex legal proceedings. The determinations process would be used where the regulation failures are pretty obvious. Say, for example, you've got missing five rates in your building. It's going to be very difficult for a developer to argue that they complied with regulations where there's no fire breaks. The legal advice received is that the appeal risk will be low because of that. Builders really aren't going to get very far in arguing that missing fire breaks met building, building regulations. Using a system outside of the courts to assign liability is far quicker than relying on the courts process, which is obviously very lengthy, um, incredibly pressure orientated at the moment um, so yes this is obviously something we do want to avoid um, and we do think this system will do exactly that finally the polluter pays amendment isn't just about the determination process it is also a wider industry levy bringing in a tried and tested route to recover funds from developers contractors and cladding manufacturers in addition to the determinations process second question the government schemes aren't perfect, but isn't polluter pays trying to solve a problem that's largely solved? We don't think that this problem is anywhere close to being solved. The developer contracts only cover around 10 to 15 per cent of the entire buildings that need remediation across the country. Furthermore, the contracts only cover life critical defects and not all defects. They also exclude a, lot, a large number of leaseholders. And likewise, the waterfall protections also rely on landlord groups having enough funds to pay for the remediation and any litigation bills. To exclude a large number of leaseholders and make any move to enfranchising at the moment is quite frankly a ridiculous prospect, because if any leaseholder decides to enfranchise right now, they would lose any protections that they have under the waterfall. And it would quite frankly be a bit of a disaster. Um, government schemes also increase the likelihood of for forfeiture for excluded leaseholders, which in turn will cause problems for the banks and associated mortgage-backed securitisations. We've also seen over 25 full building evacuations in the past seven years alone due to fire safety issues. There are clearly severe issues with the construction industry as a whole, and we do therefore need an approach that makes those who are building our homes fully liable for putting defects right without going through the courts. Full liability is the only way to end the race to the bottom, which will only continue with increased building costs and the need to be competitive in tenders. So in conclusion, although the government has moved in a positive direction, the policy just simply isn't enough to fully fund the crisis now and for all leaseholders in the future. And this could quite frankly, create serious new issues for homeowners, freeholders and banks, leaving leaseholders in quite serious trouble. Third question, isn't it too complicated to make determinations as building regulations are unclear? Building regulations may be unclear in some situations, but the polluter pays takes a more simpler approach. Assessors will consider reports on the installations by the builders, which is the same approach which is used by the Building Safety Fund, and whether those installations met the route to compliance which was specified at building control, building control approval, such as BBA certificates. If they didn't meet the requirement of their chosen route to compliance, for example, render thickness, adhesive patterns, fire breaks fixing, fixings, missing fire breaks or cavity barriers, fire stopping defects, then the developer and lead contractor pay or their parent company in the case of an SPV. After paying up, they are free to recover funds from any other responsible parties in the courts without delaying the recovery. If the determinations are more complicated or the developer or contractor can't pay or the situation is due to a regulatory failure, then funding can be recovered from the wider construction industry levy or public funding, i.e. the BSF process, which is already in place. Next question, 
isn't it better for the government to fund this up front? Obviously, this is something that campaigners have been pushing for for a number of years. And in an ideal world, yes, it would be the best solution. But the Treasury have made it abundantly clear that they won't release any further funding for the building safety crisis. And even if they did, it's unlikely to cover all excluded leaseholders and it will take a considerable amount of time. We are also in an urgent situation now with people living in dangerous buildings. As I've noted previously, over 25 fire safety related full building evacuations have taken place in the past seven years alone. And we simply don't have the time to wait for any further incremental advances in funding from the Treasury, which may or may not come. You know, we've already had to wait seven years. We cannot wait any longer in the hope that the government may or may not release any more money. We need money quick to cover all leaseholders with a fully funded solution that makes the industry responsible pay. There also needs to be an elastic backstop on the construction industry to handle cost overturns due to further defects being discovered during remediation and building cost inflation. We need the Earl of Letton's polluter paint amendment that will also bring in the cladding manufacturers because so far they've escaped liability for paying for anything. As well as funding the crisis now, we need to make sure that there's trust and faith restored in the industry and these similar mistakes do not happen again in the future.